Welcome to this video. Ding dong is our opponent. Okay, let's play King's Indian, uh, which is not a King's Indian anymore because White chooses to play Knight C3. Okay, so we want to make it difficult for him to play D E4. Um, and I will try to attack the center here very quickly with c5. Here we go. The idea is to play queen a5 later on and putting also pressure on this diagonal with the bishop. Yeah, here I wonder, um, I mean, if I take and he takes back with the pawn, queen a5, he needs to play bishop d2. Um, what he might play is just taking here on, on c5 later, but I think the diagonal here would be very strong for my bishop then. So I'm not afraid. Um, yeah, let's castle. And where do we put our bishop to? Hmm. Yeah, he might attack the pawn on e4. So now we uh, again we need to look what our opponent is threatening. Knight g3 with a clear goal to attack here on d5. If he plays knight d5, what happens after queen d5? I attack the knight. If he moves the knight, the bishop is hanging. If he protects the knight, I can maybe increase the pressure with bishop f5. Hmm. Then he might play c4. I think I just, you know, open up the position a bit because I'm I'm better developed. And here queen a5 again is threatening to take the bishop. Hmm. Now I threaten to take on d4. Do I still threaten to take on d4? Um, rook d8 or e5 first. I want to try you now to um, enlarge the potential of this bishop. And what I also need to do is, you know, to put a bit of pressure here on the d5. So white needs to take care now about the threats here on d4. He's not, he has not castled yet. And what I can try to do here is just sacrificing the exchange, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the knight here. I get two pawns at least, and yeah, nice attacking possibilities maybe. Alternative, queen a3, just waiting because I can attack here uh, the pawn on c3, and I think this is all rather loose here. Queen a3, maybe he plays queen c1, but then I just exchange here. Okay, I think this is okay. Um, after queen c1, I can maybe play knight b4 anyway. He takes, I play knight c2 check and then take here. Um, I don't have a square though for my knight afterwards, so 
so after bishop c1 this might be a problem right yeah very tricky a lot of threats in this position so what does white threaten he threatens to take my pawn on e4 so maybe I should you know protect it but I think it's not that important in the moment um, d5 is no problem at all I can also play rook d8 just bringing over pieces and if it was my turn maybe I can also you know develop here the bishop to e6 maybe d5 again is no threat uh -huh. so he said he maybe he just wants if I take here playing bishop d2 Hmm. What happens if I take here on d4 with my knight? He takes, I take. If he plays bishop d4, I have queen b4 check and I win this um bishop back and otherwise I push for d3 and I have you know good threats here maybe um, yeah it looks interesting but maybe it's not strong enough because the pawn here on e4 is also loose but maybe I just play e3 here. E3. There is no square for the for the bishop. If you take takes, I also attack the the rook on a1. Yeah, my ultimate goal here is just to develop as quick as possible and open up lines. These two rooks are not playing in the game. The bishop here as well and um, maybe you know bishop d7 no where do I put my bishop to maybe I waste a tempo b6 bishop b7 but this is very slow so rook a1 is hanging the bishop doesn't have a square He's not developed at all. Um, hmm. Um, problem is time again, so need to play quickly. I think it, it's not possible for him to castle because I also have uh, this diagonal here for my queen. The queen b6 later on, queen c5, queen b6 um, is a good option. Um, I just take here and, and get the queen. Okay, and then I uh, try to support my pawn on, on, on d2. I think it was not played good what I did um, because um, I had such a great advantage and now, um, yeah, it's not that strong anymore. And I just don't have time left, this is a problem. Yeah, this is just moving pieces here. Okay, now it he makes it very easy for me. Because the less pieces are on board, the easier it uh, it's for me to uh, to win this game. 
I think I just run with my my pawn here now. Okay, he lost on time. Yeah, um, interesting game, um, especially due to the strong bishop I had, and the whole plan was already uh, here when I started to crack up the center. So every move I did later on was aiming to crack up the black squares. Um, here c3. So white does everything to defend d4. Um, e3, and you can see this is a really strong pawn chain. Um, but I still focused on trying to open it. And here you can see that e5 again is trying to to open up the position. And this worked out quite good. Um, yeah, because White, you know, had no time uh, in this uh, game to develop his pieces. Unfortunately, I have to say that um, I didn't play that good here uh, in this position. Um, I shouldn't take um, the, the the rook here. I think it's much better now just to keep on developing and um, playing maybe, I don't know, bishop e6, then the rook over, or maybe directly rook uh, d8. Um, because I just helped him to develop his pieces. The bishop here is, uh, the, the rook here on uh, h1 is totally out of the game. And whenever he moves a king to black square, I can play bishop, uh, queen c5. So I have to say now, this was a very bad mistake here, just taking uh, uh, the, the rook with my beautiful bishop, just controlling all the dark squares. Um, I mean, I was just running out of time. Um, this was a problem. And I thought I, I, I directly win, um, but this was not the case. Yeah, thanks for watching.